Hi everyone, so recently I made a video about how to clear the coding round of Enforces. And in that video, a lot of you guys wanted to know more about the interview process and the actual interviews that will be happening for the different roles that Enforces has. A lot of you guys may have applied for it in off-campus placements. And as you already know, Enforces has completely revised their pay structure with DSC paying around 7 LPA and Specialist Programmer having different categories. With Specialist Programmer L1 paying around 10 LPA, 11 LPA, L2 paying around 16 LPA, and L3 paying a whopping 21 LPA plus. So right now the pay structure has been completely revised and of course with these changes you'll be having some significant changes in the interviews as well and of course now they're going to be a little bit more difficult okay. So that is what we're going to talk about in this video. We'll be looking at the interview experiences, the interview process and we'll be seeing the sort of questions that they'll be asking so that you're already prepared and you know what to expect in the interviews okay. And a lot of my students have appeared for these roles, you know, they have appeared for these roles in their colleges, for different interviews, for different roles. And they have come and told me their experiences, the sort of questions that they were asked. So on the basis of that, we'll be having a look and we'll be discussing the entire things that will be there. Okay. And the first thing that I'll make clear is that the role that you get will completely depend on the online assessment. Okay. So your performance in the OA, your performance in the coding round will completely decide that which role you'll be getting the interview for. Okay. So if you do very well in the OA, you might get directly mapped to the L3 if in an in specialist programmer. And if you don't do that good, but you do decent, you might be mapped for L1 in specialist programmer. And if you do average or if you do a little bit above average, you may get mapped for DSC. Okay. But of course, the selection rate is not going to be that high. You'll be having a very low selection rate because of course the packages are going to be higher than, you know, what they were before. So the first thing is you have to be good in the OA. You have to make sure that you perform well in the coding round. And for that, I had already made this video. So you can give that a watch to know how to perform well in the coding round. Okay. Now let's come for the interviews. So of course, for the interviews, the first thing that they'll be starting with is going to be the introduction. So most probably they'll be starting with the introduction, but in some cases, the panelists directly started asking the questions even without asking for introduction. So these kind of things may depend on panelists. Different panelists may be asking different sort of questions. They will have different behaviors. That is not in our hand. But of course, being prepared for the questions, that is in our hands. Okay. So of course, they can start with an introduction. So you have to make sure that you have a good introduction. Apart from that, let's talk about the commonly asked themes, you know, or things that they'll definitely be asking, whatever the role that may be. See, of course, there'll be difficulty changes, you know, like there'll be variation in difficulty. DSA will be common in all roles, but of course the DSA asked in DSC role and the L3 role is not going to be the same. So these things will be common, but difficulty will vary according to the role that you're interviewing for. Okay. So first thing that I saw is that a lot of students were asked to detail about the problems that were there in OA and how they approached them. So whatever was there in the online assessment or in the coding round, they were asked questions about that, like, how did you solve it? What approach did you use? Why did you use this approach? Was it the most optimized approach? So a lot of people were asked questions like this. Okay. Many were not, some were not, but many people were right. So again, it depends panelist to panelist, but this is something that I saw a lot of people being asked. So you have to make sure that you clear with whatever you did in the OA. And of course you have given the OA yourself. So you know what all you did and you can solve the problem again and explain your approach to the interviewer. Okay. But again, this is something that you have to keep in mind. Whatever was in the way, make sure that you keep it in the back of your head. And how did you approach it? Keep it in the back of your head. Okay. Apart from that, you had resume based questions. Now resume based questions is again common for all rules. They will definitely be grilling you on your resume. This is something that they always do even before the pay changes. They had a lot of questions on your resume. So you'll be having resume based questions, whatever skills you have in your resume, whatever projects you have in your resume, they will be asking you questions on that. Okay. Especially the projects part, they'll be literally grilling you on that. They'll be asking you a lot of questions. Why did you make this project? Why did you use this tech stack? Why not this tech stack? If you're using Java, they'll ask you, why did you use Java for backend? Why not go? Why not Node.js? Why this? How will you scale this? Imagine if your project is being used by a million people tomorrow, how will you scale it? So you can expect a lot of questions like that. Okay. So you can expect technical questions related to tech stack. You can even expect non-technical questions like what is the impact of your project? How will this project help socially if a lot of people started using it? So they'll be asking a lot of questions on that. They always do. So make sure whatever is there in your resume, make sure whatever is there in your project, you are very well aware of it and you know it inside out. Okay. They may open your project and they may ask you to explain how you implemented this feature. Like if you have a nav bar, if you have a search bar, if you have a scroll through feature, how did you implement it? 
what coding did you do in that they'll be asking you a lot of questions right so make sure whatever is there in your resume you revise it the day before the interview it is going to be essential right and of course this is something that is going to be common everybody will be getting questions based on their resume apart from that you'll have dsa but like i said the difficulty of the dsa will depend on the role that you're getting we'll talk more about it as we get into the sp now for dsc role you had all of this apart from that you had cs fundamental questions you had questions on op you had questions on dbms you had query questions all of these things are there and cs fundamental is something that is common again in all roles but you know the difficulty will vary so you have to be very careful with cs fundamentals and you have to be well prepared with cs fundamental in cs fundamental op and dbms these two are very important and you can surely expect questions from these topics in your interview and the interview for dsc generally lasts around 45 minutes so again it depends panelist to panelist some panelists may get satisfied early some panelists may take a longer duration of time but in general it was around 45 minutes okay now after dsc let's move into the specialist programmer area this is of course the main field where you have the high packages and of course the packages are high and so are the stakes and so is the difficulty of the questions that you'll be getting right so let's move from l1 and let's make our way to l3 so of course more people will be getting calls for dsc and lesser people will be getting calls for specialist programmer and as we move on the hierarchy lesser and lesser people will be getting the interview calls so for l1 what basically is going to happen of course we have the common things apart from that you'll have dsa so we'll have around lead code medium high dsa problems like the students i talked to they were asked dp questions they were asked you know like uh, graph questions specifically one was asked a coin change problem so from like most of their experiences i was able to see that they were asked sort of commonly asked questions or questions that already exist you know like coin change or some variation of knapsack or something like that nothing too complex nothing out of the box so for l1 they will be asking you lead code medium or hard problem but most probably they'll be asking you standard questions again we cannot guarantee it but generally this is the trend that i saw so you have to be prepared for any specialist programmer role you have to be prepared for dp graph and tree these three things these three arrows you have to keep in your arsenal okay without that you'll be having difficulty in the interviews okay at least on a standard level on a basic level you should be knowing them just before the interviews at least you should know dfs bfs and you know how basics of dp work how tree traversals work you have to know these things absolutely this is going to be very important okay now if we talk about l2 then that also was in a similar state you had questions with dsa it was on a little higher difficulty but again it depends panelists some people got easier problem in l2 than l1 it depends on panelists as well but in general sense it will be around lead code medium or lead code hard okay and of course you have to be very careful while explaining your approach you have to make sure that you code well so some panelists were happy with the you know verbal explanation and had a discussion on that some panelists focused on code it depends panelist to panelist but you have to ready for everything you have to be ready for everything so make sure that you write clean code make sure you follow coding etiquettes you write clean variable names you write modular code you write proper function names you have to make sure that your code is perfect and make sure that your code is bug free as well right because then otherwise it looks bad if uh, your code doesn't work the way it's supposed to be and if any of you guys you know want to practice dsa then i also take mock interviews i'll give a link to that you can take a mock interview with me and of course that will help you in preparing for the real interview and you'll be more confident going for the interview so you can connect with me for mock interview the link for that is also going to be in the description box okay so focus on the problem solving part in the interview as well because this is a place you can actually impress the interviewer apart from that of course they had the common things and there was sql querying as well they were asked to write sql queries some people were asked to write complex sql queries so you have to make sure that you're good with sql as well again if you're going for specialist specialist programmer role specially right apart from that there were code java questions there were op questions and the level of understanding that they needed that was high so even if the question was something as simple as you know differentiate between interface and abstract class they wanted a deeper explanation they wanted you to explain on a level that if you have a real project what would what would you use which would you use and why okay so you have to explain on that approach you have to explain that you are working in a real world environment you have worked on real world projects and on the basis of that you are explaining you should not be giving you know textbook definitions like interfaces there's abstract classes there's no you have to explain from a like person with industry experience that's what they're looking for you know that's the level of understanding you need to have so a great way of doing that is explaining via real world examples you know or making 
everything giving everything a small example to support your judgment or to support your definition or whatever you're giving okay so again they'll be asking you op questions that's will queries will be there cs fundamentals will be there all of these things are going to be there again with your uh, resume questions and again in resume they'll be asking you about the tech stacks if you're using spring boot they'll be asking you di they'll be asking you heavy questions on spring boot on apis and you know annotations many things will be like that but again these things will be limited to your resume so you don't have much to worry about but yes development will be there don't think it will all be about dsm okay so this is what we have for l1 l2 role and the dsc role now for the l3 role which gives the highest package i was only able to find one student who has given the interview for it so far okay so only one student i was able to find because again l3 is going to be very rare not everyone is going to get the option for getting l3 but surely you'll be able to if you're well prepared that's what i'm going to say and of course the package is pretty competitive it's on a fang level at this point so of course the difficulty is also going to be on that level if not more so for specialist programmer again there there isn't a lot of information on the internet the student i talked to he told me that they had dsa and they had again lead code hard dsa they had graph problem they had a tree problem which was on a difficult level uh, this person was not able to fully do it and again uh, after the results come i'll surely invite this person on the podcast so that you guys will be able to know more about the interview process from him itself but there was dsa apart from that they had system design as well so a lot of you guys may be surprised to hear this but, but yes as far as i've heard they will be having system design for the l3 role so only i was able to find this in l3 role you'll be having system design in l1 l2 you can expect system design still you know it's better to be prepared but not on the level that l3 will have so here they had actual system design questions like they had questions about scaling that questions about you know having a project and how would you scale it horizontally vertically how would you you know make it more usable how would you uh, you know improve the back end system there were a lot of questions and there were of course design questions as well like design twitter design this along with the apis what is rate limiting what is this what is that there were a lot of questions right on system design like there was a segment segment dedicated to this for the person that uh, was giving this interview so there was a good system design segment as well so make sure that you are at least prepared on a basic level of system design lld hld so that if they ask you some commonly asked interview questions you will be able to answer that okay apart from that there cs fundamental again sql queries were there which were on a difficult level and all of these things were asked okay so this is what the entire interview process is going to look like it may seem overwhelming but if you're well prepared it is not going to be that difficult see nothing is too difficult that's what i believe in if you're well prepared everything is a cake walk it's just the level of preparation and the level of confidence that you need to have now if, if you were to ask me for some tips right the first thing that i'll tell you is you have to be in a happy mood okay so this is the first thing i want to tell you you have to be in a positive mood see the interview is going to be human right we're not at the le- level that ai is taking interviews the interview is going to be human and of course humans work on emotion so if you're in a positive state the interview is going to be in a positive state if you're in a negative emotion you're an anxious you're stressed you're nervous or any other negative emotion you're depicting the interview is also going to get into a negative emotion so of course you have to be in a positive state and that is going to contribute to your interview a lot of people don't talk about this but i really feel that the emotions that you have actually contribute to your interview on a significant level not on a base level on a significant level so first things first be in a happy mood be in a relaxed state calm state and then go for the interview now in the interview you have to communicate well with the interviewer you have to make sure you're not fumbling make you have to make sure that you're being friendly and respectful these things matter apart from that whenever they ask you a question you have to answer it the proper amount don't make it so short that they have to ask you again and again don't make it so long that they have to cut you off you have to give them the proper amount of answer okay that they that makes them satisfied mostly i've seen students what they do they just give one line answer even though they expected a paragraph so don't do that you know give the proper amount of answer apart from that whenever they ask you a coding problem dsa problem explain your approach well you guys know the drills start from a brute force approach focus on the optimization techniques and talk well discuss well most probably if the interviewer is a nice person they will nudge you in the right direction in most of the cases right unless they're in a bad mood and in that case we cannot do something so you know like make sure your thought process is on the right direction and they will give you the nudges wherever wherever you need okay and apart from that just you know search up top 100 top 15 interview questions for oop for cs fundamental for java for spring boot whatever your resume has just google the top 50 top 100 interview questions and be well prepared for that okay so that is pretty much it of course if you have given the oa already you're well versed with dsa so you don't need to worry too much about that because you've cleared the oa and now you've come for the interview 
So interview is going to be easier than the OA. That is what I feel, right? So yeah, that's pretty much it. Apart from this, if you have any doubts, feel free to leave in the comments. If you want to connect one to one with me, then you can do that as well. The link for that is also in the description box. So that's pretty much it. Thank you guys for watching. Let me know if you want any more videos on this topic.